Hey everybody, Jacob Rhodes with True Track Saw Systems. And what I'd like to cover here today is actually one of the new products that we released this spring, 2017, is the True Track Dado Jig. And what we did is we took about four or five years worth of feedback and worked with one of our vendors, came up with this little idea, and now we've brought it to market. So this plate actually allows you to take any handheld router that's got the Porter cable style bushing in the bottom of it, or if you want to, you can actually bolt your router directly to the Dado jig, similar to our existing router plate. Gives you a little bit more flexibility there. But this plate in particular was designed with custom sized Dados in mind. So if you've ever had a project where you've needed to make a shelf or a sliding door out of plywood and you've used standard Dado blades, you've always had to stack your shims. And when you stack shims, you have to do a test cut. And every time you do a test cut, you've got three options. It either works, it's too loose, or it's too tight. So two thirds of the time, you've got to redo it. And every time you stack shims in a table saw, you've got to pull the stack out, put the stack back in. It takes time. It's also a little bit of a headache. So what we figured out with here is the ability to take your router with a uniformly sized bit and make custom sized dados. So we've got two knobs down here at the bottom and the entire plate has two moving parts. You have the pivot plate, which is the main component of the plate itself. And then you have these things down here and basically all that does is slide open and closed. And we call that a measurement block. And what that allows you to do is actually take the wood that you're going to be using in your shelf or your sliding door whatever you're making a dado for, right? Your project, your choice. And this is just a piece of scrap, but what it allows you to do is actually measure this piece of wood. So we can take the piece of wood, we can slide it in here on the dado jig, we can close the measurement block up behind it, and we can actually tighten it down, okay? And when we tighten it down, what you're doing is you're actually setting the dado jig for that particular piece of wood, right? Now, whenever we tighten these two knobs down, that gives us the proper spacing here for our piece of wood. Slides right in here, just like so. And what this block down here does is it limits how far the pivot plate can pivot. And that's how we get the width of our dado, okay? So you'll notice on the dado jig that we have both a quarter inch and a 3 8 measurement block. And what those go to are actually quarter and 3 8 diameter bits, okay? So with the quarter inch plate in there, with my wood measured, um, I can now take a quarter inch straight or spiral bit, your personal preference, and make a dado that this piece of wood will actually fit into, okay? So now that we've moved the camera over to where you can actually see a little bit more detail, it's the downside of only having a single camera, we've still got our dado jig sitting here. We've got our pivot plate that moves. We've got our measurement block that also moves. And again, we're going to take the wood that we're going to be using in our dado. We're going to slide it in right here. Bring the measurement block up on the back side of it. We're going to tighten down that knob there first. Then we'll tighten down this other one. And just like that, you've set this jig to this piece of wood. So any of the thickness variation we have in there gets taken into account. So that's how we set up the dado jig to the fit the piece of wood we're going to be using. Again, I have a quarter inch measurement plate because I am using a quarter inch bit. We also have a 3 8 The capacity for this entire jig is one inch. If you ever need to do something larger than one inch, you can do the one inch and then actually move the entire piece of track. So we've got our router here. We've got the one inch Porter cable style brass bushing on there. And the way this is designed is you have a hole right here and the router fits down in the hole. Now, the way you set your depth is set it up just like this, lay the plate on top of it, take a piece of wood the same thickness as what you're making your dado in, lay it on top. And then this is what allows you to actually set the depth for your router. Now, everything I've ever been taught says you want it to be about a third of the way through the thickness of the wood. Um, whenever you make a dado. So there we're roughly about half. So we'll see if we can get this set up a little bit closer to being a third. Eh, I'm happy with that. 
So we lock our router down there. And you can also use plunge routers with this. Just set your plunge depth to the correct setting. My personal preference is a hard-based router. They don't float as much. So now I want to plug this in over here. I'm sure we got power to go over there. Again, I've got a straight quarter inch bit in here. I've got the dado jig already set up for the little piece of wood that we're going to be cutting. And the next thing is, how do we set it up on the wood? It fits into the center groove of the track right here, rather than riding on the beveled edges, because we wanted to make sure that there was absolutely no play perpendicular to the track itself. Because if there's any play in this dimension here, it ends up in your dado, which kind of defeats the purpose. So we've got two pieces here. You can loosen these three screws up, and these two pieces can spread apart. So we can take our track here, set it there. Once we have those adjusted, you can see that there is no perpendicular play in this direction. You can actually get it so tight that the dado jig will not slide. Don't suggest it, but you can do it. Now that we've got our wood set here, we've got it set to our piece of track, how do we line it up? So if you notice, there's a groove right here, and that's a dado because I just did this about two minutes ago without having the microphone on, so here we go again. We've got three different notches out here, and what those show are actually where the outside of the various size bits are gonna go, okay? So the one out here to the end is for a quarter inch, so we've got a quarter inch out here, and then this one here is for a three eighths, and if you ever use a half inch bit, we've got a half inch right there. And what we do is, let's say we were making a bookshelf, and if we wanted our the top of our first shelf, fixed shelf, to be three inches up, we would measure up three inches, make a line. Um, this time I'm actually gonna go up four inches and make our mark right there. Scoot that over there, come up another four inches on this side here. That way we know we're parallel, make a mark. Now, we're going to take the track, we're going to slide it all over here. And again, I have a quarter inch bit, so I'm going to be using this outside mark here. And I'm going to cover up that mark there. And as with any of our router plates, you want to use some type of clamp. We do sell toggle clamps. We also have the E-Series available. And if you have a good set of bar clamps, you can always use those. You just clamp it over here and be good to go. But, lock down the first side. Pull this over here and look at our second mark. I'm going to line it up on that mark there. Right about there. And we're going to clamp the track down again. That way we know it's not going to go anywhere. So, how do we line it up? We've got our quarter, we've got our three eighths. I'm using a quarter, so I use the outside line. Put it on top of my little dot. Lock the track in place. Now we're ready to grab our router. Already got our depth set. We're gonna drop this in here. We're gonna do our first pass up against the hard stop, swing down, do our second pass. Now, if you ever get in a hurry and you lift your router off sideways, the reason this is made out of plastic rather than aluminum, like our first prototype, was because I eat through five bits in a day. That piece is replaceable, and it's much cheaper than buying a new router bit. So now we've got our dado finished here. We've got our little piece of wood that we measured, and we can drop it in and see how it fits. Now, my personal preference is that this came out just a touch on the tight side. So you've got to kind of force it down in there. But it shows that you can get a really nice, solid dado with this system. Now, if it had come out a little bit tighter and we needed to adjust, the real beauty to this system is how easy it is to adjust. All you've got to do, leave your track locked in place, throw the dado jig back on here, and if that dado had come out just a hair too tight, 
we can leave this knob alone and we can actually loosen this one. And what that allows you to do is actually pivot this measurement plate. So if we needed to make the dado just a little bit looser, you could come in here and move this just a hair. Okay? Conversely, if you needed to make it tighter, you could actually make it tighter. Okay? And it's always a good idea to take the piece of wood, slide it back in there, make sure you're getting a nice snug fit. Okay? Now let's say we wanted to make a sliding door for a cabinet or you know, whatever you're making a sliding door for. You could actually take this, slide the wood in here, close up on the back of it, and then you could pivot this out until you could see there's actually a gap between the back side of this wood and the measurement block. You tighten that down, you know it's going to be a loose dado because there's a gap where you set it. And folks, that's how the dado jig works on the True Track system. It's easy, it's accurate, it gives you plenty of flexibility to use the tools you've already got, because that's really what we're trying to do here, is take hand tools that you've already got and make them more useful. Um, whenever I can take a handheld router and a quarter inch bit, and I can do any dado from a quarter inch, the bit size, to a half inch plywood, to three quarter inch solid stuff, it just works. And just to prove that it actually is feasible, I am going to go through. Once the camera decides to quit falling over, and actually make another dado. So what we can do now is simply slide down. I'm going to loosen up both of my knobs here for my pivot thing. I'm going to take a three-quarter inch piece of solid material. Um, again, just another piece of scrap we had laying around. But you can take this, slide this in here, lock this down, lock down our second one there, do a little bit of a test fit. It's a little bit on the loose side, so I'm going to snug that up just a just a hair. Tighten that there. Okay, that's our dado thing. Pretend I actually went through and measured where this was going to go. Lock my track down, grab my router, and make a dado. Now if you notice, this dado is actually wider than the bit I'm using. So we end up having two grooves whenever we do the hard stop and the measurement block. So what the dado jig is actually doing is going through and showing you the extents of your dado. Then you just simply go through and clean out everything that's left. There we go. We got our three quarter inch wide dado cut. Push out all the little chips. And there you go, folks. That took about 30 seconds, including catching the camera. So that's how our dado jig works. If you got any questions, don't hesitate to email us. Our contact us is up at the pay up at the top of the page. We've also got phone numbers. If you get any of our products and you like how they work, make sure you leave a review. Until next time, guys, happy woodworking, and hopefully you make a lot of sawdust. Thank you.